A very good day to you. It's wonderful to be with you again on the farm, on Shalom. I want to ask you just to go straight to your agricultural handbook, your manual of life, the Bible. Turn to Luke chapter 7 and one verse, verse 19, please. This is um, John the Baptist making inquiries about his cousin, Jesus Christ. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now that sounds rather strange. Remember, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. John the Baptist was the one who said, I'm not fit to even untie his sandal laces. I am not even fit to untie his laces. Now he's sending a, a request by two of his disciples to say, are you the one or do we look for another? What is the Lord saying to us here? I think what he's saying is, you know, when the sun is shining and the birds are singing and your bank balance is looking good and everybody's healthy at home and everything's going well, it's very easy to trust God. But when the bank balance is on zero, and there are dark clouds looming, and your children are sick, and you can't find employment, sometimes it's very hard to believe. Lord, are you really there? Yeah, you, you, okay, you witness with me. Lord, are your promises real? Because I've asked you for time and time again to please undertake. I'm not hearing anything. Lord, the ceiling is like brass. My prayers are rebounding off the ceiling. Are you there, Lord? Are you really the deliverer, the Savior? Now, I want to encourage you that a man of the caliber of John the Baptist asked a question. Lord, are you really the one? Now, remember what Jesus said about John the Baptist. He said, there has never been a man born from the womb of a woman who is greater than John the Baptist. And yet he obviously had a doubt. That's why he sent his two disciples. So if you're feeling bad today and, and, and guilty and condemned because you've been doubting the Lord, don't. Remember, condemnation comes straight from the pit of hell. That's the devil. Conviction of sin comes from God. So maybe you are feeling a bit down. I want to encourage you today that he is the great I am. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Word. If you've seen the word, you've seen me. And my words are yea and amen. And I will not go back on my word. I do not tell lies. I am God. And if he's promised you that he'll never leave you and he'll never, ever forsake you, he means it. So you need to look through the, the cloudy time, the darkness. And you need to say, Lord, I'm believing for you. Folks, this ministry is a faith ministry. We don't ask for anything. If God doesn't supply, it's not going to happen. I don't want it to happen because I don't want to be a hypocrite and say God's supplying all my needs, but in the meantime, I'm manipulating people. I don't want to do that. It's got to be God. And I want to tell you, it's hard sometimes. We've got to get on our knees. We've got to trust God. Sometimes I don't feel like doing these programs, but it's not about feeling. It's about a calling. See, faith is not a feeling. Faith is a fact. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. So I want to encourage you today. If maybe there's black clouds in your life and maybe you're doubting, you're saying, Lord, where are you? Get back on your knees and say, sorry, Lord. Because Jesus said to those disciples, go back and tell John of the miracles you've seen, the signs and the wonders. And that'll speak for itself. I want to tell you, I know that my Redeemer lives and so do you know that he lives. So let's get back and start praising him and he'll bring us through. Until next time, goodbye.